Hey, I'm Maria back with another video. I think it's somewhere around the 12 o'clock hour. I'm not exactly sure the precise time, but I just want to come on here and make a video. Today is cleaning day for me. So, um, you know, I, I got up this morning and um, kind of tweaked my resume a little bit. Um, I'm going to be doing cleaning the rest of the day. Like, you know, um, after I have lunch, then I'm just going to go ahead and start you know, sweeping my floors and mopping and all that other good stuff. So, right now, I didn't, <laughs> I wasn't going to be in this video, obviously, because I look pretty roughed up right now. I'm, I'm just, like, really not, um, you know, prepared to sit in front of a camera. And then also, um, I didn't want to mess with making a PowerPoint video. So, I thought this would just be the easiest way by propping up my <laughs> tablet and using a piece of my artwork um for visual effects so this is one of my little um projects that i painted mind you i am an amateur artist i am not like you know really skilled at uh, um painting i've seen some tutorials and stuff like that but you know i i still am i'm never have i've never been able to perfect it um i mostly paint for fun but anyway um so i want to talk about the, the turbulence in my thoughts you know because i know that um, I'm usually somebody who's very focused and able to manage things very well. And, you know, the realization of everything, and, and I want to say this, um, that for, since leaving um, the farmer's place, um, I have been, this issue has been on my mind over and over and over again. And each issue that revealed itself was just more and more disturbing for me. And um, that's that creates a lot of turbulence, turbulence in your thoughts because um, you're thinking, like, how many people could do something like this, you know? And this is not for me to bring up an argument, but you have to understand, because I was isolated for a very long time and there was tension being caused in the community and the gossip and everything else, it created a division in other people, right? So I felt as though I was in a group of people who literally wanted to tear me apart because they were doing so at the instructions of other people. So when you're dealing with something like that, um, that's that intense form of bullying, um, and it's not me trying to create an argument, it's me trying to explain what's going on with me, okay? Um, that created a lot of psychological problems for me okay like a lot of psychological problems and um, obviously you're going to deal with fear you're going to in there um, deal with extreme anxiety um, I've mentioned before um, the effects of what this could do to a person so it's, it shouldn't be any surprise that you know um, that I'm going to slow down when it comes to things that I need to do right now um, I, I feel bad, but I feel like, you know, sometimes people think I'm superhuman and I'm not, I, you know, um, a lot of people could break down in a situation like this, um, have like, you know, kill themselves, nervous break. It's, it's a lot on a person. So, um, you know, um, when I think about the motive behind it and, and the bullying and, and just, People coming up with stories out of the blue, making up stories. I mean, just I realized the intensity of this crime and this bullying and the hatred that was like directed towards me. It should be no surprise that I cannot, you know, feel like I'm fully 100% functional if I don't feel safe. You know what I mean? So please, you know, I, I don't want people to think that I'm trying to bring up an argument. You also have to understand that I've been in this situation for such a long time that that is the only reality I deal with, okay? I don't get phone calls from people that I know because that has been shut off because of this program. I don't, you know, have a work environment that I go into where I feel comfortable or whatever because of this issue. I have problems with, you know, my bills because of this issue, so on and so on. Like I said, it does affect every aspect of a person's life. So the only thing I know how to really converse with about, aside from my spirituality and my hobbies, okay, but those things have been um, uh, kind of pushed to the side because of the anxiety, because of this issue, okay? So 
I get angry with myself for not being able to, you know, feel as energetic in taking it on task or whatever. Um, you know, I, I'm struggling, you know, I'm struggling. So, um, so there's a lot of mixed feelings of confusion inside of me and the doubt and worry because, you know, um, when, when you've dealt with this issue for so long and you've made so many videos, and you've argued, I, I don't like to use argue, but I would say stated the case so many times, and you, you always wonder, okay, do they understand that I don't want to fight? It's not about me, I don't want to fight. You know what I mean? I'm just basically saying what's being done to me is wrong, and I need it to stop. That's, and I don't, see, because it continued on for so long that I always feel in the back of my mind feared that they will always want to bully me. You know what I mean? So you have to understand, if, if you've been arguing your case for eight consecutive years, eight consecutive years, you're always in the back of your mind thinking, is there more to this? You know, like, why are they doing this to me? It, it, it's, it's too much. You're always feeling afraid because you never saw a person being hauled off to jail because you never saw these people, you know, die or whatever, So knowing that, that they're out of your way. So there's a feeling of fear and in doubt and rightfully so please try to understand it from my point of view you know what i mean it, it please don't make it feel or think for any minute for one moment that i'm somebody who wants this argument i wish it never happened in the first place there's not a day that goes by that i wish that i was not a victim of this you know but anyway so there's a lot of doubt and then of course the fear the fear of you know meeting a flying monkey, even though I know, I feel as though the majority of this issue has been resolved, but I still feel it's just a natural thing. If you've been living in fear 100% of your time for, I mean, I've always felt like, you know, I, I was a targeted person, but since leaving the farmer's place, it was intense, intense. So for basically 10 straight years, every single day, Every time I went somewhere, every time I did something, I was overly stimulated with these situations. So that has a psychological effect on a person, okay? So the, this is what's going on in my mind. And, and, and I, it, you know, it obviously I'm not all happy and energetic about hitting the pavement to look for another job because I feel as though that's a form of abuse. But on the other hand, I also know that I have to think about my financial future. You know what I mean? And I've mentioned in the past, you know, um, just yet to this morning, I kept thinking, okay, well, actually, in the last night before I went to bed, I was thinking, okay, you know, I know the copywriting thing is really cool, you know, but there's an issue of getting clients and I still have to deal with people. And then I also think, okay, well, <clears throat> you know, I don't mind working from home. I would prefer to work from home, you know. Um, and I kept thinking, okay, there's got to be skills that other things I can do, you know, try to figure out this plan. Because, you know, you, you, you never think that your job is associated with other people who have strings or trying to pull the strings. You don't realize that something like this could be ripped out from underneath you. Do you, you see what I'm saying? So it's not like I can just this. And then after, you know, it, it's difficult for me to... Um, to make a, a formalized plan, you know what I mean, when I have so much doubt in my mind, you know what I mean, doubt because of, you know, mainly the bullying and, you know, I guess the, the fear that somebody thinks that my aspirations or my need to take care of myself and uh, try to get myself away from people who are abusing me, they feel as though it's a game or something. It's not a game. <laughs> it's not a game at all. So, um, anyway. Um, so yeah, there's slow improvements and I do my task and I, and sometimes I fall back on, you know, doing it with the, the enthusiasm that I, I really should. Like yesterday or two days ago, I made a video and I said I was working on a, a blog, right? And my blog is not even finished because I'm looking it over and then I'm picking it apart and then I keep thinking, what is the point of posting this when these people have me blotted out? You see what I'm saying? They have their little network. They make sure that people don't, you know, connect with me. They control everything. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, it doesn't give a person a lot to um, feel, um, you know, confident about. I mean, I'm confident in what I can do, but why should I exert the effort 
when there's always that issue. Like, I, I was wanting to post these blogs onto my LinkedIn page, right? Because I feel as though a website right now is not really what I want to do and at the point of finish because, um, number one, that's money. And right now, I am not working, and I have to save money. So, you know, the course that I was talk taking is talking about, you know, most of these people do work off their LinkedIn page. So I kept thinking, I need to build my LinkedIn page. Okay, fine. So I'm like, okay, well, I need to work about talk about things that are work-related, right? So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to make this blog. And so I want to build content. And it's like, I keep saying myself, you know, I need to do more. But I feel like nothing matters. You see what I'm saying? Because of this campaign. And, and you know, they block out your YouTube channel. They block out your, you know, any connections that you could have on LinkedIn. I shouldn't have this issue. They, they control my environment. They control that. Okay? And this is not an argument. But this is, why should a person feel confident in anything when they have, you know, uh, they know that there's a network that manipulates everything they do. do. What are their chances? They need to escape from it, you know what I mean? Or how is it that they can function? Because, you know, people being pushed into marriage and stuff like that is traumatizing. It's traumatizing what these people have done. Please do not think I'm trying to bring up an argument. I am not bringing up an argument. I am telling you how I feel. These, these issues are very real very real to me and they are very um disturbing you know if it affects my sleep it affects my mood um you know and it, it, it literally skews your logic what, what i mean by that is like it it it, it messes up, it, it it creates a feeling of surrealism okay that because of the anxiety that's behind something like that you know so <clears throat> anyway um, I don't like to fight at all, um, but if something threatens my life, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to speak out, you know, and so I keep thinking that, um, that this issue, um, by me talking about my feelings, it seems as though these people had a competitive spirit to where things get out of hand. I, I know that in a lot of company handbooks, they talk about hazing. Um, I don't know if that would fall under the category, but I do think it has something. It might, okay? But, um, you know, my existence is not meant to be a competition. I understand there's certain people who have work work styles, and they want it, they might feel com competitive. Just like, you know, McDonald's is competitive with Burger King, or they used to, they used to be. You know, they want to know, and maybe it even goes down on certain levels to where, like, if maybe a person's an HR representative, they might be jealous of another HR representative. I've never been like that, okay? I was just trying to, like, work and pay my bills, okay? That's all I really thought about. Seriously, I never thought about that sort of one-upmanship. Never crossed my mind, you know? Everything I did in my life was meant to for me to survive and to try to do it in the most pleasant manner I possibly could. You know what I mean? Life is hard. It's very hard. There's so much unhappiness in the world, okay? So I try to, you know, create little parts of happiness here and there. You know, like, you know, I like my little stuffed animals. You know, I like my arts and crafts. Um, but outside, it seems as though there's a lot of hell to deal with. Um, but anyway, I, I don't, uh, don't want to argue about things, you know? Um, but I do feel as though I have become a person that has been so um, inundated with this issue that, um, you know, I have found myself just literally boring myself because it's like, don't you ever talk and think about anything else? And I keep thinking my need to survive is far more important than anything else at this moment. You know, and I feel as though when you bring religion and bullying things and taking away rights and stuff like that, that's highly alarming. That's the kind of stuff that just like, literally, I will tell you that my entire immune system has been affected by this issue. I am not kidding. Okay? Um, so, please, forgive me, you know. And no, I'm not trying to be rebellious in any way by rejecting marriage, especially when you look at my situation. Um, when you think about the individuals involved, no, I would not want to be married to them. But I will say that um, 
when it comes to um, my situation. You get you got to think. Now I was legally divorced in 2018, right? So 2018, okay, I was running for my life. Before that, I had left my marriage. And I was running for my life, okay? So 2018 came, it was finalized. And then 2019, I was traumatized. And then 2020, 2021, it was just like, oh, oh my gosh. So during this time, all I was thinking about was keeping a roof over my head and surviving. I had no interest, especially since I understood that I was being gang stalked. So why in the world would somebody think or even expect me to get married to anyone? I'll go back to people who, I'm not going to go back to anybody who's going to abuse me. Regardless. Okay, that's abuse. And um, um, it's and it's illogical for people to want to put that sort of pressure on marriage after, especially after, you know, me going through what I went through. You know, I don't even know anybody. Okay? And the only people I do know are my abusers. You see what I'm talking about? You see what I'm saying? So... There's a whole world out there that I, it's almost like that. There is a whole world out there that I have not experienced. You know, when I have experienced it, it became, you know, polluted and then biased against me, you know. So it's, it's difficult for me, you know, to feel, to feel safe, you know. And... It's kind of like when I, when I go on and make these videos, it kind of reminds me of this scene in this movie. Like, okay, and I know this is kind of gross and gory, and it's really typically not my kind of movie scene because I don't like violence at all. But this girl, she was assaulted in this movie, and she was so disturbed by it, she finally got her revenge, and she just started bashing this dude. Now, mind you, she just kept bashing and bashing and bashing. He was long dead. His head was all bashed in, his limbs were torn apart, but she just kept hacking and hacking away. Now, the thing is, is in, in some ways, I understand what she's saying, feeling. No, I do not want to hack anyone. But what I'm saying is, like, when something threatens your life to that extent, um, it's like you can't stop beating it. You can't stop yelling at it. You can't help trying to figure out who's doing this to you to get it, it away from you. You want it to get away from you. Get away from me. You know? And I understand with, with that scene only because that kind of fear in a person, it's just, it's just, it's illogical. You know? So anyway, um, I want to wrap up my video. I've got plenty of things to do today. A lot of cleaning. Um... And then as I clean, you know, I'm thinking about the different things I can do to try to figure out. And I am. I'm, I'm making an effort to, to really make sure my resumes are more fine-tuned. I know I used to be really good at resume writing. Seriously, I used to like writing resumes. But I just feel, like I said, that I do now instinctively identify um, earning an income with some form of abuse. Because... Just like the issue or the, the relatable Pavlov the dog, this is how I see it. I, it's very hard for me, and I just need people to understand that. You know, it is hard for me because of the domestic issue, the domestic stalking issue, and the, um, the devastating effects that it has, you know, um, the... The, go the gossiping campaign, I think, um, which destroys a person's reputation, which all of it was false, but except for the fact that I did lie to my ex-husband about my race. But other than that, oh yeah, and the thing that it being having a kid out of wedlock, that's totally true. But I was young, and I don't really think I should be held for, you know, responsible for something, you know, for the rest of my life. You know, I did everything I could to... Um, to be independent, to raise my son. I, I never asked anybody to jump on my train. Um, this is not an argument, but it's just like that girl who keeps hacking away. She's so terrified of what these people goddamn are. I can't help it. Can't help it. Sorry, I'm sorry. You know, anyway. Um, I'm going to wrap my video up, and I will be back with another video sometime later. Um, you know... 
try to understand. Don't don't try to put pressure on a person to find a mate right away, especially in a gang stalking issue, because there's issues, you know, of, of trust. There's issues of trust, and there's issues. There's fearful. There's fear. There's all kinds of, you know, feelings that a person has, you know. Um, so, you know, um, my my issue of not getting married is not a, a form of rebellion. I am more comfortable now because I'm used to it. I'm used to being by myself. You know what I mean? And I am a very different person. I'm very different. Like, you know, um, I, I'm, I don't like to function around another person for very long. I shut down, you know, regardless of how, I, how warm, warm feelings that I might have for them. It's just like, okay, I can't deal with this anymore. It's just too much, you know. Um, this is who I am. Especially after all these years. So, you know, um, I understand people mean well, you know, and then some people don't mean well. They just straight up want you for stuff and just use you or whatever. But um, I, I understand that. But please don't ever put pressure on a woman to, to get married. Okay. Um, so, like I said, some people do mean well. They think, well, you know, you're such a nice girl, Maria, blah, 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 you know, and you know, you, blah, 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 you can make someone happy, and someone can make you happy, blah, 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 but like I said, you know, um, um, it's not an act of rebellion, it's, it's, um, common sense, <laughs> so I'm gonna wrap up this video, and I'll be back with another video sometime later, take care.